Thomas stands on the sideline with Coach Brian. The team is trailing the opposition by 14 points, and halftime is coming up. I've never gone into halftime with such a deficit of points, Brian. Usually we're winning, or the difference is within three points. I'm not sure if I can maintain my charismatic leadership under these circumstances. It occurs to me that I may be at odds with a neutralizer of leadership. You always have been able to motivate your team to perform at elevated levels. You have both signs of effective leadership, a strong personality, and a depth knowledge of the sport and its players. You can tell how they feel by the looks on their faces even through their helmets, and you know how to address their feelings in the right way. This is because you have strong emotional intelligence. I suppose you're right, but what has empowered me to do these things? I assumed it was just the built-up inertia of all our previous victories. There are several conduits that lead to your overall power. Firstly, you have expert power. You know more about the game than anyone else on the field. And that's coming from you, the one who literally studied and gained a degree for this sport. You also have legitimate power, because you have been hired by the university to fill this position, whether your team is up by halftime or not. It has also helped that you have developed leader-member exchange with your players over the past year on Dale's behest. This allows you to have more influence in your relationships with each player. I feel like you're the one doing the pep talk, Brian. You don't really use transactional leadership, which uses reward and coercive power to encourage and punish. While this can accomplish minimal outcomes acceptable for some coaches, you choose not to throw parties or chastise your players with extra conditioning after a close game. You have the social intelligence to see that the transformational leadership is superior by creating an inspirational vision which all players can strive to be a part of. I don't throw parties for my players because some big wig in Washington said it was illegal. You also have referent power. The players see you as a role model and see traits in you which they wish to emulate. Brian, I'm a grumpy, middle-aged man with no friends, no children, a wife who divorced me, and all I do is drink and wallow in my house when I'm not on the field. Don't kid me. No, it's true. They see you as a man true to his word. They see you as someone who doesn't compromise when it comes to principal issues. They don't see obstinance. They see a cold, steely gaze. They don't see a lonely old man. They see a bachelor who parties all the time and goes home with multiple women. They see you as a cautious man who never allowed a family to hold him back. You make millions, Thomas, and they'd love to be you. I suppose they do see that in me. Thank you for the advice, Brian. I should probably address the fact that they shouldn't want to be like me after the game, though.